Lisa Perkins, the editor and host of Exposure Spotlight Magazine, where your voice matters. And it gives me great honor and privilege to be in the midst of a founder, a filmmaker. He is the president of Warriors Empowerment Group, and he is from Bridgeport, Connecticut. And his name is, ladies and gentlemen, Edward Figueroa. How are you doing today? Oh, Teresa, thank you so much for allowing me to be on your on your podcast, on your program, to be featured on your on your on your magazine. Uh, it is an honor to be here. Uh, yeah, you're a well-spoken young lady. <laughs> well, and thank you. I appreciate you, that. You do an amazing job, and and uh, I'm proud of the work that you're doing. So it's an honor for me to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you, and thank you so much for accepting this invitation as well. And of course, you are a person that's doing tremendous things with, with people. You're helping people in different communities. So I want you to share with everyone about your organization. Sure. Uh, my organization is called Warriors Empowerment Group, and uh, it is a faith-based teaching I call it more of an awakening because I believe that we all have what it takes to overcome any obstacle, any trauma in our lives uh, uh, inside of us already. So it's, it's a teaching that uh, God and I got inspired and, and I, I developed. And uh, I kind of based it around, uh, I was blessed to have been mentored for many years, uh, I could say decades. Yes. Uh, by some of the most iconic figures in, in pop culture, like Dr. Maya Angelou, uh, Nicholas Ashford, and, and Valerie Simpson. Um, and the wisdom and the knowledge that I gained from the years of working with them and, 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 and being around them um, just helped me uh, throughout my whole life. But when I started mentoring uh, those struggling with addiction, it really came to focus and it came full circle, the message that I'm able to uh, deliver uh, to those struggling with addiction. And, and to date, I've saved countless lives. And, you know, it's hard for me to take credit for something that big because it, it is, what I do is, is, is much bigger than me. So, you know, I, I give all praises and all, all uh, you know, glory to God. Yeah, Absolutely. amen. That is wonderful. That is a wonderful thing that you're doing, Edward. So since that is one of your missions is to raise awareness about addiction and to help addicts, what led you exactly to that path of doing that? You know, for me, I've always followed that voice of truth that lies within each, each of us, you know, and uh, addiction uh, although, thank God, I've never had uh, any substance abuse problems or alcohol uh, problems, but alcohol and, and substance abuse has always been around me, you know, growing up in, 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 in the barrios of, uh, of Bridgeport, Connecticut, uh, born in the projects of Bridgeport, Connecticut, you know, that is something that is prevalent in, 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 in that kind of environment. So it was always around me. I, I didn't know that I was gonna come full circle and uh, actually lead a, 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 uh, a successful group uh, when it comes to addiction. It, it, it was just me listening to that voice of, of truth from inside and, and following that, I ended up in a recovery house uh, about seven years ago. And uh, I started as a per diem there. Then within the year I was, I was promoted uh, to supervisor. Uh, and it was after I founded and developed my Warriors Empowerment Group, I started doing it at this dual diagnostic recovery house, which is not just for those in recovery, but also for those uh, with have mental health issues, because they kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, so that's where it all began for me. I just, you know, followed that voice. I ended up at a recovery house. I was hired, you know, uh, I was promoted and I started Warriors Empowerment Group at that recovery house, which lasted you know, over six years until I, uh, I went solo. Mm, that is awesome. So d by that, do you see a shift in the way that uh, addiction is perceived by the society? Well, you know, addiction is something that is one of the, the, the leading killers, darkest 
leading pillars, should I say, in, in our country. Uh, it, it's around everyone. It, 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 it's, it doesn't just only affect, you know, uh, uh, the inner cities. It, it affects high society as well. Um, and it's a subject that very few people like to talk about because I feel that uh, they think or, or they believe it's a dead end when in actuality it is not. It is not right. a dead end. Those who are struggling with, with addiction are amongst the strongest human beings on the face of the planet. All the trauma that they've been through, all the, all the, all the suffering that they've survived. And because they have survived, um, God has a purpose for them in their lives. And it's up to me, you know, in Jesus' name, to get them to realize that, you know, they can, they are, and they have always been stronger than addiction. Hmm. So what, what would you say, in what way has it been handled in the legal system when it comes to addicts? Well, because it is one of the leading killers and it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's a disease that has taken over this country, you can say, um, there is money um, allocated for it, but most of that money is, is spent on, you know, like, uh, uh, buying the, the there's a there's a um, um, a medication called Narcan that when someone is in the midst of opioid addiction, you use this Narcan. It's almost like a nasal spray. You put one spray in each nostril, and it separates the opioids from the brain, and it saves that person's life. So a lot of the money spent is is you know how much re more research can you do. You know, there's uh, to me the the uh, recovery field and and the, the it's it's a business. You know, uh, a person comes in uh, looking for help, and they get help for for whatever that is, a uh, 30 day program, 60 day program, 90 day program, and then after that program they do well. Then they, when they head to the outside world, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, that's when they falter because most of these guys they don't have a place to go. You know, they usually end up in shelters you know, and then trying to survive the, the elements and, 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 and not having any luck and you're not, not being able to find a job. There's a lot of things missing when it comes to those struggling with addiction. But it is something that um, it's become a purpose for me because I've seen the success rate uh, of it as well. And, and it inspires me to, to help anyone who is struggling. Right. So, you know, the road to recovery, uh, of course, I'm sure it is not easy. It's not an easy thing for most of those that is uh, addicted to, you know, to drugs or what have you. But what would you say is the average success rate for for those that are addicted? It unfortunately, you know, it, it depends on the individual, you know, it depends on the individual. And uh, Warriors Empowerment Group, again, is a faith-based uh, teaching awakening. Um, so um, as far as um, those who, who are, are struggling to stay clean, you know, addiction doesn't highlight those who have made it. Um, but when it comes to, you know, addiction, I feel that it's a dark, it's a dark energy attached to those people and it has controlled their lives. Um, it makes them it makes them feel comfort. It's very cunning. The, the the dark energy of addiction is very cunning. It puts it throws his arms around you and and says, oh, forget about that. Don't worry. You know, let's go to the corner liquor store, grab a bottle. You know, let's go to the corner and, 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 and buy that that crack pipe or let's let's pick up that heroin. You know, it's very cunning. So, you know, when it comes to um, addiction, you have to realize that, you know, most of the people struggling with addictions have programmed themselves to retreat in times when they need to stand up and fight. Mm -hmm. And that I think is, is, is uh, very prevalent when it comes to those in addiction. They just, it's a program. Somebody pushes that button and instead of stopping and analyzing and realizing that they can fight for one more day of sobriety, they just follow that program without even thinking that it's never worked for years. So they just follow that program and, and, and the darkness, you know, the, the, the cunningness of addiction knows how to bring you to that same crossroads where you usually relapse. Yeah. So has there been very much success with those that you have assisted? I, I, I tell you again, I, I, can't, I can't take credit for 
what's going on with Warriors Empowerment Group. It, it, it started six years ago, but it's taken a life of its own. You know, I've had great success rate, um, a lot of media coverage uh, when it comes to uh, what I'm doing. And um, in the city here where I live in Bridgeport, Connecticut, a, a, one of the senators here, Senator Dennis Bradley, um, gave me a facility to work my Warriors Empowerment Group. So, you know, before COVID, we, we got really bad with COVID again. I was doing Warriors Empowerment Group there, teachings uh, on, on Sundays, because it's, it's more like a ministry. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was also doing, uh, people would call interventions, I call them warrior inventions to awaken that warrior inside of someone. You know, I get a lot of emails from mothers struggling with their, with their son or their daughter. And um, I'm doing a lot of Zoom right now, but when, when I get cases like that, you know, I find a location where I can sit down with both of them um, and give them a, a, a warrior invention, you know, that, the mm -hmm. teaching that, that awakens something inside of them to, to make them feel like, you know, it, you know, it, it's not going to be easy, but it is something that I can do. It's, it is yeah. doable. You might not win every war. I mean, every battle, but you will win the war if yeah. you stop and fight every time. Yeah. Is there a certain age group that you intake or you? Well, um, unfortunately, uh, addiction doesn't discriminate. You know, uh, I, I've always mentored youth and adults throughout my life. Um, so when it comes to dealing with someone a little bit younger, I handle it a different way, you know, a little bit more private uh, with, with, uh, with, their, with their, you know, a parent. Um, but when it comes to the adults, they, they come right to Warrior House and uh, we do the, the session there. Again, because of COVID, I've been doing just about everything like we're doing right now on, on Zoom. On Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm hoping that, you know, with this new administration, they can really get this under control so that we can all, you know, enjoy those moments in, 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 in life that has been taken away from us because of this pandemic. Right. What is the youngest age that you have actually, um, you know, assisted ever? My, my, the, my youngest uh, client that I uh, helped was 13 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. Come from abusive family, you know, uh, dad in prison, um, um, mom addicted. So the grandmother had them, you know, so, you know, these are the things and the challenges that, 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 I don't want to say me, but these families face, yeah. mm -hmm. then when addiction is attached to it, it just takes it to a whole other level. You know, I'm just there to, to be able to bring everybody down uh, to where people can speak and people can understand that, you know, addiction is not stronger than you. You have things inside of you that God put there to right. help you defeat anything and everything. I just help you awaken those, those weapons that you never knew existed. Yeah. Is there like a certain formula or secret that you have uh, to help those to recover? And can you share that with us? Yes, absolutely. First of all, you know, it's faith. Faith is, is, the, uh, is the superpower behind everything. But what you have to realize is um, we fight our greatest battles we always fight our greatest battles in our minds. Mm -hmm. It's never a physical fight. Everyone in this world is battling something in their minds, you know, regardless of their stature. Everybody's fighting something in their mind. So what you have to realize is that the, the foundation upon which you fight every battle is made of, of all the people who love and support you. And most, most of the time, those are the people that you've stolen from. Those are the people that you've hurt. Those are the people that, that are distant from you now because of your trying to wake up every day and fuel that addiction. You do anything for it. You know, you, you, you grab that credit card, you matched it out, you, you, you took the keys and took the car and you crashed it up. You know, you stole money from someone because you, wanted, you, you needed to, to, to buy, uh, you know, to fuel that addiction. So all of the people that you've hurt make up the foundation upon which you fight every battle. So in order for you to take that power back is you have to, from your heart, from your heart of hearts, ask them for forgiveness. Although they've heard, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, time and time again, what makes this time different is that you're gonna attach any and every emotion that you have to that apology and, 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 and let it all out. 
And once you've apologized, an amazing thing begins to happen. That foundation upon which you fight every battle begins to solidify. And you, have to, you don't have to say anything else after that because every day clean speaks volumes. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, really. So, like, do you guys have, like, a particular, like, a group home or, uh, you know, I know you said you do a lot of it, like, even right now on Zoom because of what we're going through. But even beforehand, did you guys have, like, um, you know, some certain type of, uh, some type of home or something that you guys yeah. placed them in? Yeah, well. Have them do, like, a you know, where they go through weeks or whatever months of, uh, you know, different programs? Yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate because I've worked in this field for a long time and, and I know so many people who, you know, help people in recovery find homes, find a place to stay, find treatment programs, you know, find, find employment. So I'm surrounded by these amazing people. I wouldn't be able to do this by myself, but I do have a physical warrior house, again, you know, uh, given to me by Senator Dennis Bradley. It's a beautiful uh, historic house and half of it is rented out and the other half is for Warriors Empowerment Group. And again, because of, you know, COVID, it's, it's been really hard to, to get, you know, get to see people in person, but thank God for technology <clears throat> that, you know, although I still have that physical house that I'm able to at least, you know, wake up early in the morning, have my coffee, say my prayers, be grateful for everything that I have and then take that and, and, and try to help a mother who has a son or a daughter struggling with, with addiction. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell me this, why did you name the organization Warriors Empowerment? It, again, it wasn't me. I just heard the name in my, in my head. And I did understand before that, that those who, um, are struggling with addictions are strong human beings amongst the strong. So they're gonna come out being a warrior, yeah, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So in 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 the initial meeting, I, I I make them understand what I'm saying. You know, you are strong. You are not weak. If yeah. you were weak, you would you wouldn't have survived mm. this the one of the deadliest, darkest killers in our country. So you have to understand that you survive because you're strong. You're resilient. You you're a, you can adapt to change. You mm. know. And, um, and, and also when it, when it comes to something like that, once you strike that first nerve and they start understanding that, oh, maybe this drug is not stronger than me. Maybe that bottle is not stronger than me. Once you place that doubt in that mind, and then I just continue to reinforce that faith, reinforce that faith, reinforce that faith. And anytime you battle and that craving hits you, and those dark thoughts start pounding on, you know, they say we think between 40 and 60,000 thoughts a day, the mind does. For those in addiction, how many do you think are dark thoughts? Probably almost all of them. So I teach them how to stop and now analyze these thoughts. I teach them how to use anger in a positive way because you can't treat addiction like a comfort, like a friend, like a buddy. It's mm -hmm. someone who psychologically pretends to be a comfort, but all the while is trying to lead you to your death. <coughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, I want to say this, the rise of uh, opioids. Is it opioids? Yeah. yeah, opioids. yeah. <laughs> it goes to tell you, I know nothing about drugs. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> you know, it has put a lot of families in the chaos of addiction. You know, yeah. uh, particular with their children, you're finding a lot of young people today that is very strong out on, you know, on drugs, taking pills and all of that. Um, do you think that addiction in children uh, is harder to deal with than those uh, that deals with addiction in adults? Or does it... I, I might be someone who thinks backwards because I believe that the younger you are, the more open you are to the universe and, and to possibilities and to believing and to having faith. I think the, uh, the older you are, you get set in your ways. You know, we, 
we have a conscious mind and our subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is, is, is filled with files and belief system that half of them are untrue, you know, and then the conscious mind is here in the now, you and I speaking. But in most cases, our lives are dictated by our subconscious mind, not by our conscious mind. So, you know, young people are, are uh, extremely resilient, but mm -hmm. even more so extremely open to the possibilities that you interject in their hearts and, and in their minds and in their souls. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They are pretty um, resilient and, you know, they just need some direction and some guidance as well. And love. But, yeah. I've been oh, saying, yeah. tell me how long. Okay, if you don't mind, share with us about, because you are a filmmaker, correct? That's correct. Can you share with us about that? Okay, well, um, I've written everything in my life the same way. Um, <clears throat> when I internalize something, it turns into uh, visuals in my head, you know, scenes that just start to create themselves. And once that begins, there's nothing I can do. I mean, even when I'm trying to sleep, it'll just continue to, to formulate the whatever is happening inside. And then once that idea uh, comes to fruition as far as visually, then those, those, those uh, visual pieces begin to piece themselves together. And then I just write what I see. So it's not like I'm thinking and I'm thinking and thinking. It just develops inside of me. And then uh, after a while, it, it pieces itself together. And then I just write what I see and, and edit what I feel. So it's, you know, uh, it's, it has to be a gift, I believe. Okay. Now, how do you relate the filmmaking with the Warriors Empowerment Group? Because you did something in relation to that, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, right now I'm working on a, a, everything that I do as far as like, uh, my warriors empowerment groups, my warrior ventions, which are like interventions, but it's, it's more of a ministry, a spiritual kind of thing. Um, I video document everything. So I, I have a guy who comes around two guys sometimes, but they come around me and when we do everything, we shoot everything and everybody agrees to, um, share their story, uh, with the world. Um, so right now I'm in the process of you know, taking everything that I've shot and I've also created a, a, a little story around it. And uh, we begin shooting that in, in, in like another three weeks um, and we're gonna put it all together. So it's gonna, it's gonna seem, although what I'm doing is like a, a video documentary, but when I put the story, when I add the story, the screenplay to it, it's a short film, maybe 20 to a half, 20 minutes to a half hour. Mm -hmm. And when I put it all together, it's, it's gonna give you the two elements of um, uh, some really good actors um, um, and, and portraying people in, in, in families struggling with addiction. And then it goes to the Warriors group where it shows you uh, what happens to me and what comes out of me during Warriors Empowerment Group that makes it so powerful. Okay, so some of the people that has recovered from your group, are they in your film as well? Well, they, they're just yeah. all supporters. I told them that once we start taking it on the, on the road, I want all my warriors with me. Oh. You know, they, they're very supportive. I get texts, texts you know, at, at, at all hours of the night. I always answer because you never know. It might be someone who really needs, you know, uh, just a little push or some words right. of encouragement, you know. So, you know, I'm, I'm blessed because, you know, I, I've been doing this now, uh, Warriors Empowerment Group for over six years. I've saved a lot of lives and I just have, uh, an amazing group of, of uh, people around me, not only entrepreneurs, but, you know, those who have gone through Warriors Empowerment Group and in time have become stronger than their addiction. I have a, such a great support system, including, you know, the community at large here in the city that I live with. So again, I, I could never have dreamt of doing this by myself. I've always had help. I've always listened to that voice of truth from the inside and and what comes out of me during Warriors Group is definitely much bigger than I. Yeah. I call it God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise <laughs> God on that. Yes. The glory. What a God blessing. And you are a blessing. You Thank know? you. 
I hey, appreciate just you. Just maintain well. doing what you're doing because I think this is a great thing, especially helping those that are in need of help to recover from Absolutely. what they're going through because uh you know of course we know the enemy he is so busy so whoever he can get in he would do just that and the right. people would feel and think that they need a uh, a substance that they really don't need but like you said it's all dealing with the mind and with uh, you know this little saying is what uh, a mind is a terrible thing to waste and most certainly it is so we need more people like you that's trying to striving and um you know to help those that that really needs to help so i really commend you on what you're doing and to maintain continue doing that it's a blessing and Thank again, you. you're, you're making films you know to help people with <laughs> recoveries and all of that i think that's awesome so how would you access hollywood's um portal of addiction would you say well, it's a romantic again, it's just it's just one dimensional it's one dimensional they show they might have a film of someone who beats addiction but in most cases when you watch addiction in a film it's just one dimensional people caught out people overdosing people you know committing suicide which is very prevalent you know in within the people struggling in the community of of addiction um so you know it's 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 a sad reality but you know, maybe, you know, God will give us an opportunity to put something out there that really sheds the light and shines the light on the power that people have inside already, not only to to battle, but to to defeat, you know, that dark energy of addiction. I see it one way. I, the way that I see it is all of those who are struggling with addiction, the darkness has claimed their soul already, and it will not stop mm -hmm. coming after them. So it is up to me to make them understand that they are stronger than addiction. They are stronger than that dark voice. They are stronger than, than that thing that tries to scare them. They just have to stand up and fight because they've trained themselves to retreat in times when they need to stand up and fight. And what are we fighting for? You're fighting for your life, but you're fighting for, you know, the greatest moments of your life yet to come. God has a purpose for you. If you survive oh, yes. addiction, mm -hmm. you have a purpose. Yeah. You have a purpose. Believe it. Yeah, praise God on that. Uh, you know, what can you share, Edward, uh, or what words can you actually give for those who might be struggling with addiction or have a friend or a family member who may be struggling with addiction? Well, first thing you have to understand is um, that they've heard it all before. You know, most people, when it comes to addiction, they've been through recovery programs after recovery programs after recovery programs. And it's hard for them to understand that, you know, it's, it's, not a, it's not a, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. They're just caught up in a, um, in the wrong way of thinking. You know, they, they, they don't understand and they, they don't recognize their strength. A lot of people who are struggling with addiction don't have faith. It's buried under tons of, of pain, years of trauma, you know, years of hardship. And all they have to do is you, you have to awaken that in them. And once you awaken that in them, you stay on top of them. You reinforce them. They, they they start winning small battles one at a time. Okay, I, I, I fought that craving today. I didn't have to go out, I beat it, you know? And you build on top of that. You know, if you have someone in your family that's struggling with, with addiction, you know, you have to understand that they've been through a lot of stuff and uh, they know what you're gonna say. And sometimes when you when you say something strongly to them, they, their, their blinders go up, they, they shut everything out, you know, and then they get, go on that, that auto, auto uh, uh, cruise control, mm -hmm. and then they end up relapsing again. It, you know, when it, comes to, when it comes to addiction, you just have to find a way to, to, to reach them. And when it comes to recovery programs, there's, there's two sides of addiction. You have the clinical side, which is the medications, the doctors, the clinicians, and then you have that emotional side. If you don't, help them handle that emotional side, yeah. that traumatic experience that they keep seeing in their mind. You know, if you don't help them deal with that emotional side, stand up 
to the darkness that, that tries to get them to that crossroads where they know they're going to relapse. You have to get to them before that, you know. It, it's not an easy thing to do, but it is possible. It is possible. When I was growing up, there were mentors everywhere, you know, mm -hmm. and I was blessed to be mentored by, by, by the greatest. But, you know, now the families are broken, you know, the kids are 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 just in the streets you know they 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 don't have guidance the, you got uh grandmothers and, and mothers working two and three jobs so it's hard for them to stay on top of their children but if you put forth an effort put put forth a plan of action and stick to that plan without veering yes. it can help your child it can help your child yeah. Well, look, you given or you have given some great information to help those who may be struggling, you know, with uh, addiction or, or even those that are listening may know someone or what have you. So, uh, what kind of information or contact information, if possible, if you have that, to where they can email you, or you know, just you know, what kind of information that perhaps that you can yeah. give that you want others the to learn. The easiest way. Yeah, the easiest way to contact me is Warrior House, B as in um, book, P as in power, T as in testimony. That's Warrior House, BPT at gmail.com. And that's the best way to reach me because of this COVID thing. And also on my Facebook, you know, my Facebook is, uh, it, it used to be content creator, uh, you know, uh, screenwriter. Uh, music and entertainment management. That's what it was. And then about, uh, I would say like five years ago, I, I went to church service and it was amazing because I was the, 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 I was sitting there having my coffee. It, it was more tables and chairs and you have coffee and breakfast, whatever. Then the, the, the big screen came down and the young pastor started to speak. It, it was simulcast from like six, seven different locations. This, this one church that I go to called Vox uh, Church, which is voice. Um, and when the young pastor came out, he looked directly at me. He was looking directly at me and he says, you know what's wrong with your dream? He says, you're not including God in your dream. Oh, wow. And when he said that to me, I felt so electrified. Mm. And I wiped out my Facebook page and, and took out the creative writing and all that stuff. It's down at the bottom. And then I started showcasing Warriors Empowerment Group. Starting putting my, I have hundreds of, of written testimonials, audio testimonials. So I started just um, taking my Facebook page, which is 90% business because uh, the people on my page are all, you know, casting directors and directors and writers and now uh, recovery specialists, you know. So I started turning my Warriors Empowerment Group, uh, my Facebook into Warriors Empowerment Group, and that's what it is. And it just, it's taken a life of its own, you know, media contacting me, you know, families contacting me. So it's like, it, I have to wake up every morning, energize, say my prayers, and try to keep up with something that God and I started six years ago that's kind of like taking a life of its own it would be an amazing reality show i'll tell you because yes. to, capture, to capture that when you when you when you hit somebody in the heart and they start getting emotional and they see the light and the, the words that they say the testimonies that they give wow. there's nothing like you, it you I got may it need all. to consider that edward well <laughs> I, I do have it all on film you know i i, I doc video document everything so you know, whenever God opens that door, you know, I don't, I don't force nothing. I don't rush nothing. I am open to it. I did put my feelers out when it, when it comes to that, but I have to stay focused on uh, saving lives. And, and if yeah. I continue to stay focused on that, then everything else, oh, everything come, else going to come to place, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you one story when the last time Demi Lovato um, had her relapse, I reached out to her. I have a gift for being able to reach people. Um, so I reached out for her and I gave her these, powerful words from Warriors and Empowerment Group. And she responded back right away with this beautiful testimony wow. about the words that I sent her. And I, I had that all, you know, uh, I screenshot everything and I, I keep that for myself. Yeah. But it, it's amazing the way God works. Right. You know, I, I always thought all my life that I was going to be, 
you know, in, in Hollywood or, or, you know, working for Tyler Perry or something <laughs> with all these creators writing stories and turning them to screenplays, impactful stuff, you know, women empowerment stories, stuff, you know, and, and that's what I believe God put me here to do. Yeah. And here I am saving lives in wow. Jesus name yeah. from all those struggling to break free from the shackles of addiction. Mm, it's just, yes. it's amazing. I take well, it. Well, like you said, it's a ministry within itself and you're definitely doing that. Absolutely. In Jesus name. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. It's look, this is a wonderful story. Uh, just wonderful testimony because that is a testimony for you as well to be able to know that God has allowed you and, and well, he utilized, utilized you as a vessel to help those that is struggling with addiction and helping them to recover. So I think that is totally awesome. Yeah, it's, a, it, it's, it it's, it's been an experience. People think about the, you know, the, the destination. It's not the destination, it's the journey. It's the mm, journey you know? Wow, that's powerful you know? within itself right there. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, um, perfect example, you know, Dr. Maya Angelou, she was the mother figure within the Ashford and Simpson circle. And she was an amazing person. I mean, I would speak to her in Spanish and she would sp speak to me in Spanish. She was fluent in Spanish. Oh, really? And she was the type of person that you would be able to sit down with and have a conversation with. Within that conversation, she will feel, she would feel the weakest of your vibrations, the weakest of your energy. And then she would create inside what to say to you to strengthen oh, those wow. weakest of vibrations. And I didn't realize until I was standing in, 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 in doing my warriors group that that's how they mentored me. That's how they mentor me. And that is the basis of warriors empowerment group to be able to feel the weakest of vibrations with, within the, the, the group or the people that you're speaking to and then create inside, you know, what to say to them to strengthen, you know, those weak vibrations. And, and once you do that, you just build on top of that, help them build on top of that, help them understand that they are stronger than, than, than any addiction, any obstacle, anything. And sometimes we go through pain so that we learn something and become stronger on the other side. So everything goes hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. That is awesome. Fantastic. Is there anything else that you would like to leave with those that are listening in the audience? You know, is there anything else that well, you'd like to hear? Yeah, it's just, you know, when it comes to addiction, if you if 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 you're in someone's family, if you love someone who's struggling with addiction, just understand that, you know, without you and without all the support, no matter how upset they make you or how upset you know, uh, you know, how many times you try to help them and they, they relapse, understand that without you to cling to that family unit, that foundation that makes, makes up the, you know, the foundation upon which they fight every battle, without that, without you, their life is, their life would end. Lifeless. Their life would end. Yeah. So you have to hold on and, and, and have faith, pray to God, you know, try to get them help. You know, and, and you know, if, if, if you ever want to reach out to me via email, we can communicate via email. We can arrange a Zoom. Again, it's, you know, warriorhousebpt at gmail.com. And, and, and I'm here to, to, to serve you. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is my purpose. Oh, wow. That is wonderful. And you are definitely working in your purpose. And, yes, and you're achieving some great things and helping those again that are uh, struggling, you know, with addiction Absolutely. and helping them to recover. So Absolutely. I think this is so awesome, uh, Edward. And uh, personally, I want to thank you once again for sharing uh, your, the information that you have about your organization. And once again, everyone, this is Edward Figueroa. And uh, he is the founder, the president, and he's also a filmmaker of Warriors Empowerment Group out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. And I am so honored that God allowed me to make this connection with you. Uh, and hopefully we're going to do this again. Absolutely. And I'm just so excited and maybe we can bring 
uh, some of your, uh, your clients in that you had the opportunity of working with. I would love to hear their story as well. So we like to do that, um, you know, maybe sometime really soon, okay? That would be it. Everyone, look, you just heard the voice of Edward Figueroa of Warriors Empowerment Group. And again, thank you so much for being a part of Exposure Spotlight Magazine talk show because Edward, your voice, (laughs) it matters. I appreciate the platform. Your voice matters. I appreciate the platform. Oh, look, appreciate thank you the so much. <laughs> and God bless you. God bless you too. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Spotlight Magazine, bringing you the best in news, entertainment, music, beauty, fashion, celebrity interviews, political issues, spotlighting local and national businesses, health and fitness, inspirational morals and values. If you would like to be featured and have a story to share, Give us a call at 225-394-7200 or email us at ExposureSpotlightMagazine at gmail.com. Again, you can reach us at 225-394-7200 where your voice matters. Exposure Spotlight magazine.